Welcome back. In this video, you will learn about telescoping series. Let's get to it. All right, so a telescoping series is a special type of series whose terms collapse, or you could say telescope. And so the reason why this is a special type of series is because of the collapsion of those terms, it's going to be easy for us to determine what the series converges to. And so if you take a look at this series right here, we have the sum from n equals one to infinity of one divided by n minus one divided by n plus one. Now, if we want to determine if this series converges, and if it does, what specific value it converges to, what we would need to do is find the nth partial sum and then take the limit of that partial sum as n approaches infinity and see if it exists, right? So if you don't remember, the definition of a convergent and divergent series is the following. If we have a sequence of partial sums S sub n, and the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth partial sum is equal to s, and s exists, then that sequence of partial sums converges, and the series also converges, and s is the sum. s would be the value that the series converges to. If s does not exist, then the sequence of partial sums diverges, and the series also diverges. And so if we go back to our series, if we want to find the nth partial sum, we first need to write out a couple of the terms of this series. So if we start with a sub one, where n is equal to one, that will look like this. We'll have one divided by one minus one divided by one plus one. Now that will be equal to one minus one half, since one divided by one is one, and one divided by one plus one is one half. Now let's take a look at a sub two, that will be equal to one half, minus one divided by two plus one, and that will be equal to one half minus one third. Then let's look at a sub three, that's equal to one third minus one divided by three plus one, and that will be equal to one third minus one fourth. And then let's look at one more term, let's look at a sub four, that will be equal to one fourth minus one divided by four plus one, and that will be equal to one fourth minus one fifth. Okay, so those are the first four terms of this series, a sub one through a sub four. And now let's take a look at the first four partial sums of this series. Let's start with s sub one. That's going to be equal to a sub one. So that's just going to be one minus one half. Now s sub two is going to be equal to a sub one plus a sub two. So we have one minus one half plus one half minus one third. So we have one half minus one third. But now notice that we have a negative one half and a positive one half. And so those are going to cancel out. And so S sub two is just equal to one minus one third. Now, if we look at S sub three, that's going to be equal to A sub one plus A sub two plus A sub three. So we're going to have one minus one half plus one half minus one third plus one third minus one fourth. Now in this case, we have a negative one half and a positive one half that cancel out once again. And we also have a negative one third and a positive one third that are going to cancel out as well. And so for S sub three, we're just left with one and negative one fourth. And so this is equal to one minus one fourth. All right, and then finally, let's look at S sub four. That's going to be equal to a sub one plus a sub two plus a sub three plus a sub four. And so that's going to be one minus one half plus one half minus one third plus one third minus one fourth. And then a sub four is one fourth minus one fifth. So we have plus one fourth minus one fifth. And so once again, negative one half and positive one half will cancel out. Negative one third and positive one third will cancel out and then negative one fourth and positive one fourth will cancel out. And so we're just left with positive one and negative one fifth. And so S sub four is equal to one minus one fifth. And so by looking at the first four partial sums, you can kind of get the idea of what we mean by a telescoping series where the terms collapse. All of the middle terms of each partial sum cancel each other out and we're just left with the first term and the last term. And this is going to continue on forever with every single partial sum for this series. We're always going to be left with that first term and that last term. And so what's going to happen if we were to look at the nth partial sum? What will that be equal to? Well, if I clean up my work here, 
Let's write out what the nth partial sum would be equal to. We'll start with the first term, which would be a sub 1. And so as we saw earlier, that is 1 minus 1 half. Then let's add that to a sub 2, which is positive 1 half minus 1 third. Then let's add that to a sub 3, which is 1 third minus 1 fourth. And then we'll add a sub 4, which is 1 fourth minus 1 fifth. And that would continue on, but then we're going to skip over to the term a sub n minus 1. One before the term of a sub n, where the nth partial sum will stop. So a sub n minus 1, if we replace n in this expression with n minus 1, we will have 1 divided by n minus 1 minus 1 divided by n minus 1 plus 1. But note that this negative 1 and this positive 1 will cancel out. And so this will actually just be 1 divided by n. So we have 1 divided by n. And then let's add this to a sub n, which will be the last term for the nth partial sum. And so that is just going to be 1 divided by n minus 1 divided by n plus 1. So we have 1 divided by n minus 1 divided by n plus 1. Okay, and so note what's going to happen here for this nth partial sum. This negative 1 half will cancel out with this positive 1 half. This negative one-third will cancel out with this positive one-third. This negative one-fourth will cancel out with this positive one-fourth. This negative one-fifth will cancel out with some positive one-fifth in the next term. Then for a sub n minus one, this one divided by n minus one will cancel out with some term before it. And then negative one divided by n will cancel out with positive one divided by n. And so what we're left with is this first term of positive one and this last term of negative one divided by n plus one. And so all of the terms are going to collapse or telescope, and we're just gonna be left with the nth partial sum is equal to one minus one divided by n plus one. This is the nth partial sum for this series. All right, so we have the first part of a sub one and the last part of a sub n. And so then we could use this partial sum to determine the convergence of our telescoping series. In fact, the way we found this nth partial sum can be replicated for other telescoping series. And here's what I mean by that. If I clean up my work here, if we have a telescoping series, then our nth partial sum could be viewed as the following. Our first term that we would typically say is a sub one, we could view as being two separate terms. We could have a sub one minus a sub two. And then our next term would have a sub two minus a sub three. And so you can see how those terms would collapse. Negative a sub two and positive a sub two would cancel out. And this would continue on to another term, positive a sub three minus a sub four. And that would continue on forever until the last term of a sub n minus a sub n plus one. Okay, and so for this partial sum, all those middle terms are going to cancel out, and so we would say that the nth partial sum of a telescoping series will be equal to a sub 1 minus a sub n plus 1. All right, so if you have a telescoping series whose nth partial sum is in this form, you could say that the nth partial sum will just be that first term, or the first part of your first term, minus the last term, or the second part of your last term. And so then because of this definition, we could say that a telescoping series converges to a sum s if we take the limit as n approaches infinity of this partial sum. And so a sub one is just a constant, so that will just be a sub one, and then we'd have minus the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus one. And so if this limit exists, then s will exist, and we would say that our telescoping series will converge to that value of s. But if this limit diverges, then of course we would have to conclude that our telescoping series diverges. And so if we take a look at our partial sum for this specific telescoping series, s will be equal to one minus the limit as n approaches infinity of one divided by n plus one. Now for this expression, as n approaches infinity, we have one divided by n, and as n increases towards infinity, this denominator will increase towards infinity because this is getting larger and we're just adding one to it. So this is going to continue to get larger. And so we have a fixed value of one divided by an increasing denominator, which is going to become zero. As n approaches infinity, the value of this expression will become zero.
And so what we find is that s is equal to one minus zero, which means that s is equal to one. And so what we find here is that this telescoping series converges to one. All right, so to recap everything we just went over, the convergence of a telescoping series is defined as the following. For a series of this form, where our middle terms are going to collapse or telescope, leaving us with an nth partial sum of that first term minus the last term. If the limit as n approaches infinity of that last term, a sub n plus one exists, then the telescoping series converges to s, which is equal to a sub one minus the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus one. If that limit diverges or does not exist, then a telescoping series also diverges. All right, so it is important to remember that this definition for the nth partial sum only applies to a telescoping series where your terms collapse in this manner. And as a result, this equation for S is also only applicable for a telescoping series of this form. All right, and so with that, let's look at another example of a telescoping series whose convergence we can determine by using this method. All right, so here we have a series, the sum from n equals one to infinity of one divided by n squared plus three times n plus two. All right, now before we do anything, let's take a look at the first couple terms of this series. All right, so this is going to be equal to the first term, a sub one. So let's plug one in for n. So we'll have one divided by one squared plus three times one plus two. And then we'll do two more terms. So let's plug in n equals two. So we'll have one divided by two squared plus three times two plus two. And then let's plug in n equals three. So we'll have one divided by three squared plus three times three plus two. And of course we could continue to add on terms after that. But if we simplify, this will be equal to one divided by one squared, which is one plus three times one, that's three. So three plus one is four plus two is six, so we have one sixth, then that will be added to one divided by two squared, which is four, plus three times two, which is six, six plus four is 10, plus two is 12. So we have one twelfth. Then we will add that to one divided by three squared, which is nine, plus three times three, which is also nine, so nine plus nine is 18, plus two is 20. So we have one twentieth, and that would continue on from there. But if you look at these terms, it doesn't really seem like we have a telescoping series. We don't have any collapsing terms so far with what we have written out. And you might be able to see that as we would plug in more values of n, that we still would continue to get positive fractions. And so it would seem that nothing is going to cancel out. However, this is actually a telescoping series in disguise. What we can do is actually break up this rational expression into two rational expressions by using partial fraction decomposition. And so this is a topic that we covered earlier in calculus where we learned how to integrate rational expressions by using partial fractions. But here we have another use of partial fractions that will allow us to find the convergence of a series that is a telescoping series. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to use partial fraction decomposition to rewrite this series to have two rational expressions rather than just one. And so if we do some side work here, we know we want to decompose one divided by n squared plus three n plus two. And the first thing that we need to do in order to break this up into partial fractions is to factor the denominator. And so we have n squared plus three n plus two which is a quadratic expression where the squared term has a coefficient of one. And so what we can do to factor this is ask ourselves what two factors of our last term two added together give us the coefficient of our middle term three. And we know that one times two is two and one plus two is three. And so that's going to be our two factors. This is going to be equal to one divided by n plus one times n plus two. And so now we can break up this rational expression into two partial fractions, right? We're going to have one partial fraction for each of these factors in the denominator. Now, both of them are linear factors. And so the partial fraction decomposition is pretty simple. This will be equal to some coefficient a divided by our first factor of n plus one plus another coefficient b 
divided by our second factor, n plus 2. And so now what we want to do is solve for the values of a and b, and then we will be able to rewrite this rational expression with these two rational expressions or partial fractions. And so the way we do that is we get a common denominator between our two fractions, and that will make this fraction have the same denominator as what is on this side of the equation. And so then we could set the numerator equal to the numerator over here. And so a quick way to do that is to just set this numerator of one equal to each of these coefficients times the factor that they don't have in their denominator to have the common denominator. So if we start with a, we're going to have a times the factor it doesn't have in the denominator, right? If we want this partial fraction to have the common denominator of n plus one times n plus two, the denominator needs n plus two. So we will multiply a by n plus two. Then for our second term, we will have b times the factor it doesn't have in its partial fraction to have the common denominator. In this case, we have b divided by n plus two it's going to need n plus one to have both of those factors, which is the common denominator. And so we multiply b by n plus one. And so now we have an equation that we can use to solve for the values of a and b that will then lead us to our complete partial fractions. So if I clean up my work here, we can solve for a and b by choosing convenient values of n that will allow us to solve for those values. So here's what I mean by that. If we let n equal negative two, this whole term right here will become zero because negative two plus two is zero. And so that will eliminate a from the equation and we will be able to solve for b. So if we let n equal negative two, we will have one is equal to zero plus b times negative two plus one. And so if we solve for b, one will be equal to b times negative one. And if we divide both sides by negative one, we will find that b is equal to negative one. And then if we wanna solve for a, we can let n be equal to negative one, and that will make this factor become zero because negative one plus one is zero, and zero times b will be zero, and that will allow us to solve for a. And so if n is equal to negative one, then we will have one is equal to a times negative one plus two plus zero. And if we solve for a, we'll have one is equal to a times positive one, right, negative one plus two is positive one, and a times one is just a, and so we find that a is equal to one. And so now we solved for both a and b, and so we can replace a and b in our partial fractions with those values. So we know a is positive one, so I'll erase a and replace it with one, and we know that b is negative one, and so we could replace b with negative one, but we could pull that negative out front and just subtract that fraction. So we'll have minus one divided by n plus two. And so now if I clean up my work, we have now found the partial fraction decomposition for this series. We can rewrite this rational expression to just be these two simpler rational expressions that we call partial fractions. And so we'll have that this is equal to the sum from n equals one to infinity of one divided by n plus one minus one divided by n plus two. Okay, and so now I'll clean up my work and we can now look at the nth partial sum of our series to see if we have a telescoping series now. All right, so S sub n for the nth partial sum will be equal to the first term, a sub one, which if we plug one in for n in our series here, we will have one divided by one plus one. So that's one divided by two or one half. So we'll have one half minus one divided by one plus two, and one plus two is three, so we're subtracting one third. Then we will add that to a sub two, and so if n is equal to two, one divided by two plus one is one third, so we have one third minus one divided by two plus two, which is one fourth, so we have one fourth. All right, and then let's do another term. We'll add this to a sub three, and so if n is equal to three, we have one divided by three plus one, which is four. So we have one fourth minus one divided by three plus two, which is five. So we have one fifth. Now we can continue to add terms from there, but let's skip ahead to the a sub n minus one term. And so if n is equal to n minus one, we have one divided by n minus one plus one. So we're just going to have one divided by n. 
and we will subtract one divided by n minus one plus two. And so if we have n minus one plus two, negative one and positive two will become positive one. And so this denominator will be n plus one. And so we will have one divided by n plus one. And then let's look at our nth term, a sub n, and that will just be one divided by n plus one minus one divided by n plus two. So we will have one divided by n plus one minus one divided by n plus two. Okay, and so now we can see that we have some collapsing terms. We have negative one third and positive one third. We have negative one fourth and positive one fourth. This negative one fifth will cancel out with a positive one fifth in the next term. This positive one divided by n will cancel out with a term before it. And this negative one divided by n plus one will cancel out with this positive one divided by n plus one. And so all we're left with is this positive one half and this negative one divided by n plus two. And so what we find is that s sub n, our nth partial sum is equal to one half minus one divided by n plus two. The first part of our first term minus the second part of our last term. And so now if we take the limit of our nth partial sum as n approaches infinity, we will have that s is equal to one half minus the limit as n approaches infinity of one divided by n plus two. And now as n approaches infinity for this expression, we have one divided by n plus two. As n gets larger, it's just going to increase towards infinity. And then we're adding two to it. And so this just continually gets larger. And so we have one divided by an increasing value, a fixed number divided by an increasing value. And so as that denominator gets larger, this whole fraction or expression is going to get closer and closer to zero. And so the limit as n approaches infinity of this expression will be zero. And so what we find is that s is equal to one half minus zero, but we don't need to write that zero. And we have that the sum of our series is equal to one half. And so we can conclude that our telescoping series converges to one half. And that is our final answer. All right, so sometimes you might come across a series that initially doesn't seem to be a telescoping series, but if you recognize that it can be broken up by using partial fraction decomposition, then you can take a second look at it and then see if you have a telescoping series. And if you do, you can use that nice nth partial sum in order to determine if your series converges and what the sum of the series will be. In this case, we were able to find that that sum is one half and so our series converges to one half. All right, and so that's all I had for this lesson on telescoping series. If you wanna see some more examples of telescoping series, feel free to check out my examples video that I'll have linked at the end of this video as well as in a description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments, but if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now, so I will see you next time.